All righty, happy uh, Wednesday, everybody. It is uh, workout uh, labeled 82. Again, I probably should do my job here soon and relabel them or, or send, like a, send like a spreadsheet that says what each thing's about. But you guys are working. I know, and I know you don't do a lot of workouts without me, so I'm not too worried. Uh, but for sheer education and, and being able to be at the gym talking rain and being able to turn on the YouTube and do it is always a helpful situation. So here we go. You know me and I like to work, and today's kind of a work day, so we need to, we're, we're kind of in this phase of work. Um, I have a ab core circuit to start with. Some of it is timed and some of it isn't. Then we're gonna have a chest back shoulder by try. We've done chest back shoulder by try circuits, and then we're gonna do the leg core version, you know me, and we'll have another up body circuit. Anyhow, why am I talking fast and loud? I'm trying to give you some energy so we can get after this workout. When you're ready, I'm gonna get my timer set. Now you can't do planks fast, right? But we have our one minute planks. I'm not going to change them. So if you would like to adjust in them, cool. One minute plank, 20 sit up. One minute plank, 20 reverse plank. One minute, one, I'm here, right? Here we go, ready? Set and go. One minute plank. I am not gonna give you the different planks. But if you would like to mix in side planks, feel free to. If you want to do rotational planks, feel free to. If you want to mix in elevator planks, awesome. Those are clearly going to be harder. But I'm going to do five one-minute planks with our five sets of 20 abs. So it's five minutes of isometric core to go with your 100 abs. Later on, we'll do the wall sit version with our legs. So there's your theme for the day. We'll have a chest back shoulder by try one way. We'll do it a different way later. So there's plenty of changes to stay stimulated. Three and focus. Three, two, one, and relax and breathe. Definitely slow your abs down because it's not timed. 20 sit-ups, you won't do it again today. Legs straight or legs bent or one leg straight and one leg bent and you can mix it up as you need to. You can lay on the ground and you have a normal sit-up. You can lay on a bench and have your feet on the ground. That is an elevated sit-up. You can lay on a ball and that is a stability ball set up. You can lay on a decline board, like what we have here at the gym and your gym, the decline board, and do a decline set up. 20 sit ups. And educationally, decline sit ups are not the same as elevated sit ups. Elevated sit ups, your feet are below your body, so your hips are lengthen more, so you're gonna maybe get lower abs. Decline sit-ups is a position that gets harder the higher you go up in the board, but your feet are not below your hips. Anyhow, there's your magical education piece for the day. Round two, I don't wanna be in a hurry, but let's get on our abs core. Round two, one minute plank, and then you're gonna do 20 reverse crunches. Ready, set, and go. During your plank, take the weight physically and mentally, out of your elbows, take it away from your shoulders and your neck, take it off of your toes and your legs, and put it in the center of your body. Like I said earlier, if you wanna mix in some side planks and hang out on the side for a little bit, cool. If you wanna mix in rotational planks, cool. You can mix up your swimmers and your elevator planks, you can do as you need to to survive your plank. Ten seconds. Again, five one minute planks, minimal change, more of a challenge. Three, two, one, and breathe. Reverse crunches, both legs are moving on your reverse crunches. You can have your body up, which is your isometric ab, 
which is actually different than your plank, but you'll, all, you'll feel everything kind of working together. And you have your legs are moving because your abs. Or your body is down, again, your abs are tight, and the mindset of a reverse crunch is that you lengthen and contract your abs. You're not just moving your legs. 20 reverse crunches. Your legs are moving because of your abs. And there's no rush. A little bit of work, a little bit of fun on a Wednesday afternoon. 20 reverse crunches. Round three, when you are ready, we're gonna be on our one minute plank for the third time. Remember, if you wanna mix things up, mix things up. If you don't wanna mix things up, don't mix things up. One minute plank, and then you're gonna have your legs staying up on your toe touches. Here we go. One minute plank, ready, set, go. Breathe and focus. Take the weight out of your extremities and put it in the center of your body. I don't want your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your elbows, your toes, your knees. I want your abs and your core. One minute. Kinsey, do you want abs? In three, two, one, and relax, and breathe, and focus. After your one minute plank, you're gonna have your legs are up on your toe touches. Keep your one, sorry, keep your one. Keep your legs up on your toe touches. A lot of people struggle in this, even though it's known as one of the easier abs, and that's because the hamstring flexibility or inflexibility. If you need to bend your knees a little bit, that's okay. But I want your legs going up, and you go up on your 20 toe touches. A vertical shortened motion, 20. Do you want cardio or just abs? Just abs. 30 scissors and 20 sit-ups. 30 runners and 20 reverse crunches. So 30 scissors, 20 sit-ups, all here. When you get done in there, it's okay if you're not there yet, take a big deep breath. You're gonna be on your fourth plank. We're then gonna do V-ups, and then we're gonna have our last plank and then you either either do sit-ups on a ball if you have a stability ball, or you're gonna uh, mix up your sit-ups and toe touches again. So, round four, one minute plank. Ready, set, and go. One minute. It's your fourth time. Normally, which I don't like that word technically, usually, again, I don't like that word technically, We tend to do the different plank positions. Today, I just want the challenge of the five one-minute planks. Breathe through your core. I don't want your elbows, your knees, your ankles, your toes, your neck, your shoulders, I want the body. Fourth one minute plank. It's gonna go with our V ups, V as in victory. Three, two, one, and relax. Take your time to be on your V ups. V as in victory, legs straight, arms straight. You could be on the ground and maybe have that supported 
challenging motion. You could be on a bench if you need to have a shorter motion or you're tired of getting on and off the ground. You could have a bigger motion if you're laying on a bench. Again, it goes back to that sit up. You have an elevated V up, not a decline V up. 20 V ups. We have one more round to go. So a comfortably challenging ab core start. We'll then do a nice slow chest back shoulder by try version one. And then we'll have our leg version of this and then we'll have a different chest back shoulder by try. So definitely one of those days. Last one minute plank when you're ready. Elbows and toes. Again, you can do hands and toes and you can do a side plank if you need to. Ready, set, go. Combo two is 30 slow runners and 20 reverse stretches. Again, if you ever want to try that side plank, it's do the rotation, but stop. You're staying on that lateral position. Yes, you're going to get obliques, but you're also going to get your lats. That's the funny part of this. People that do a lot of hip dips, like, man, my lats are sore. Well, here's hip dips, right? And they do a lot of them. Your obliques love to help out. Your lats love to help out. It's an isometric core position. So give it a whirl as you wish. When you get done, if you have a stability ball and you didn't use it earlier, use it this time. If you don't, repeat your sit up and or toe touch and relax. 20 sit ups and or toe touches. That's a hundred abs core. So 100 reps and five minutes of abs and core. Just a nice start to a Wednesday workout. sit-ups and or toe touches. As you're finishing off that circuit, loop one on this upper body circuit since we're already on the ground. I'm going to have you do 20 chest flies. Then you're going to get off the ground on our bent rows and then we're going to do our shoulder presses. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, right? So 20 chest flies. You won't do it again today. Now I did say stay on the ground, but if you want to lay on a bench or lay on the ball, that's fine too. 20 chest flies. You won't do it again today. Then we're going to do 20 bent rows. You won't do it again today. 20 shoulder press. You won't do it again today. Loop one is 100 chest back shoulder buys and tries. We'll do a different 100 later. 20 reps of each. Last part is your 30 slow swimmers and your 20 V-ups. And then you're all done. Big, slow, huge reps. Your chest flies. Whether you're laying on the ground, ball, or bench, your shoulder blades lead the way. It's wide and big and pulling, chest pulling. Laying on the ground is a safe way to do them and a training tool for width. Laying on a stability ball, you're gonna work on some core and stability. You also could get more motion. Laying on a bench, you can incorporate other tools with your feet on or off the ground, but you'll have, again, a little more motion, but you're stable on a bench unless you're challenging the body positions. 20 chest flies. Big, slow, wide, won't do it again today. Remember, I'm trying to be a little bit ahead of you so you know what to do, so you get your circuit done at your pace. But I'm not gonna use the word fitness. We're not gonna go fast. You'll have your 20 bent rows after you do your chest flies. You're gonna get low, you're gonna stay low, and you're gonna row. On Monday, 
we have the three sets of 20 rows and the two sets of 20 lap pullovers. Today you're going to do one set of each eventually. 20 trap rows, get low, stay low, and row. So again, diversity is going to come from a lot of different exercises today, but I don't want you waiting for me and talking about things, so I do want to be a little bit ahead of you. When you get done with your 20 trap rows, you're on your 20 shoulder presses. Whether you're sitting tall, standing tall, kneeling tall, one weight or two weights, you've got your 20 shoulder presses. We haven't pushed technically. You pulled on your flies, you pulled on your rows. Later on, we'll push on our chest and pull on our lats and pull on our traps. Anyhow. You know it, you love it. 20 on your shoulder press, and then you're gonna do 20 on your open wide biceps. And that's based on if you have the tools to change your hands. If you don't have the tools, just give me 20 biceps. But open wide biceps, like you did last Friday, is the long head of your bicep. Keeping those hands open on your open wide biceps, 20 reps. And if you have a bar, your hands are open the whole time, per se. If you have dumbbells, you can change your hands. If you have a cable, you can kind of change your hands. Your hands are open more. TRX, again, your hands are more open on a bicep. So really, dumbbells is the only tool that would give you the all the variety of things. 20 biceps open wide, and then you're gonna do 20 overhead triceps, or you can do skull crushers, whether you wanna lay on something, unless you have a TRX, Skull crushers is your option. Most people choose overhead triceps. 20 overhead triceps. Again, you won't do these again today. We have that timed ab core circuit. We have 100 up body reps now. We'll have a timed leg core circuit coming up with a different up body loop. And then like we've been doing, we've been having these exertion finishes. After your 20 overhead tricep or skull crushers, I hope you know me well enough to say, when I say we did the plank circuit and we have the leg circuit later on, we're gonna do our wall sits coming up. When you're ready, we have our five one minute wall sits. I'm not going to formally change them between regular wide and narrow, but you can change your wall sits. If you ever need to get off the wall, you can do your pulsating squats or you can do any of your squats because the combo is our alternating legs. Anyhow, one minute wall sit. At any time, you can get off the wall and do your squats. You just got a minute with your always 20 alternating legs that I am gonna get you through, right? Here we go, one minute. Ready, set, and go. During your wall sit, which you guys have done many times, last Wednesday we had a similar routine with our planks and our abs and our wall sits and our legs and exertion. But during roll set, you got regular stance, wide stance, narrow stance. You can mix in calves if you want to mix in calves. You could play around with it. You could get off the wall and do squats, regular squat, wide squat, narrow squat. You could do pulsating squats. I just want one minute. You got either isometric legs or on your pulsating squats, pulsating isometric. That technically not the right word, but it's not an isometric and it's not a full concentric. But we're going to combo with our alternating legs. Three, two, one, and breathe. Take your time. I would love it if you held weight. 
You don't have to hold weight, but it would be awesome. You've got your 20 total alternating stationary reverse lunges. Whether you have weight or weights or not, you can hold the weight up or you can hold weights up or down or you don't have to hold weights at all. 20 total alternating stationary reverse lunges is a safe start to your legs. The wall sits isometric. You put a lot of pressure on your muscles. We need a combo with an easier concentric exercise so we don't get your joints like your knees and your ankles. 20 total alternating stationary reverse lunges. We'll see you next week. Monday night. And I can do it too for you. Do the 630 because you'll fill the time slot. Twenty total all chain legs. So like earlier, we've got five minutes of isometric legs and core with your hundred total alternating legs. Shake it off when you're ready. One minute wall sit. You can mix up your feet, regular, wide, narrow. If you want to get off the wall and do squats, get off the wall and do squats. You've got regular squat, wide squat, narrow squat, and pole sitting squat. Ready? Set, go. One minute wall sit. But as you know, we're in a combo with all training legs. So if you'd like to do your squats, feel free. Mixing up your feet changes the activation of your legs and your muscles, like your leg muscles. Mixing in isometric calves is great. Monday, you guys did the pyramid of calves, but those were straight legged calves which is the gastroc, the bubble calf, seated calves or knees bent calves, your soleus. There's an underneath calf, and that's good for biking and hiking. Whenever you get up on your toes, you're gonna use your gas, or for athletically, sorry, like walking and running and things. When you get up on your toes, you get your gastrocs. It's very rare you have a knees bent, get up on your toes position. In three, two, one, and relax and breathe. And I hope that burned more than the first one. This is a lot of legs. Core doesn't burn, it, get, it gets fatigued. Legs are gonna burn. 20 total alternating, balancing, lengthening, stiff legged deadlifts. We did both legs, stiff legged deadlifts the other day. All training, done them before, balancing, lengthening, contracting. Please make sure you go all the way up so you can consistently and effectively go back down. 20 total reps. So those first two rounds, I chose pulling combinations because the wall sit is gonna really go after the quads and the glutes and the knees, and I don't want that. So mixing in some pulling will help displace that load into the hamstrings and glutes. Warms up your joints, your ankles, your knees, and your hips. So there's always a reason, whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. 20 total alternating reps. When you get done, please shake it off. Be mindful that it's a very leg dominant circuit and it's going to burn more than the core ab dominant circuit earlier. We'll be back on the wall sit soon. And again, you can do regular squat, wide squat, narrow squat, pulsating squats if you really, really want to. One minute. Ready? Set. Go. I would love it if you mixed up your feet a little bit wider, a little bit narrower. Back against the wall, butt against the wall, shoulders against the wall. Mixing up whether you get up on your tippy toes or not for some isometric calves or concentric calves. Again, you guys have done so much work, and I know it might sound a little redundant at times, but the littlest changes go a long ways. Mixing in calves, playing around the width of your feet, getting on and off the wall quickly with some other things.
another two. This is the third set of five sets. Three, two, one, and relax. Take your time. Lateral lunge, again, whether you have weight or not, please be mindful. It's a quad and hamstring glute pushing. It's still kind of safe, but you've got that deviation. Stationary forward lunges, which is coming soon, is gonna be the ultimate superset. So a ton of quads, but it would then affect everything else. So I'm saving them for the last one. <laughs> 20 total alternating lateral lunges. If you have one weight, it's down the middle. If you have two weights, I prefer one in and one out of that stepping leg. If you have no weights, awesome. Make sure you slow it down and you load it up as you push yourself back. And that rhythm I've talked about a lot since we started doing this online pushing exercises, you push yourself back, whether you push yourself backwards or back where you came from. Pulling exercises, you pull yourself up. So there's a different mindset. This is your third round of five rounds. You get a very leg dominant circuit. When you get done, you're back on your wall. You might find yourself entertaining, doing pulsating squats or mixing in your squats. Ready, set, go. One minute wall sit for the fourth time. Taking your time, enjoying the moment. Here's up in the zoom side. It's normally a decent turnout. 6 a.m. is always biggest on everything. But I got my three rock stars. Malia, Lori, Stella. In the house on a Wednesday at lunch, last day of September, end of the quarter, quarter three in the books in about five hours. And relax. If you have something to step up on, step ups, please do it. If you don't have something to step up on, I'm going to have you uh, mix in stationary reverse lunge or stiff legged deadlifts again, saving the stationary forwards to the end. Again, if you have a step up, cool. If not, do stationary reverse lunge or stiff legged deadlift. 20 total legs. Step ups, if possible. Low and heavy is always quads. Higher is always hamstrings. Stationary reverse lunges is hamstrings, glutes, quads. Stiff legged deadlifts is a lot more hamstrings, some glutes. Minimal quads. You have the lateral lunge. Stationary version is pushing with your outer quads and outer hamstrings and outer glutes, passus lateralis, semitendinosus, glute minimus and medius. There's a walking lateral lunge, more pulling, that gets your inner quad, vastus medialis, semimembranosus, different muscles turned on. That's all part of your quads and your hamstrings. 20 total legs, whether you do step ups or stationary reverse lunges or stiff legs. We do have one more round to go of the wall sit with a one more alternating leg. Technically the hardest combo of the day with a wall sit and a stationary forward lunge. We're then gonna do our different upper body, still 20 reps. So it's 200 up body reps, 40 of each, but two different movements per. Blah, 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 all right. Last one minute wall sit, last 20 alternating legs, one more upper body circuit to go. Ready, set, and go. One minute wall sit. 
and take a big deep breath. What a great time to put those shoulders down. <sighs> take a couple deep breaths in, taking the tension out of your neck and out of your shoulders. Maybe closing your eyes and turning off that computer screen in your brain. I don't physically turn it off because I'm on there. Uh, but uh, just unwind for a second. Sitting in, you can mix in your pulsating squats or any of your squats. We're gonna have a stationary forward lunge coming up soon. Very tough combo. Two, one, and relax. Stationary forward lunges, whether you have weight or weights under your chin or down outside your legs, it technically is the hardest combo of the day. It's a super set, and you did it on the fifth and last round. Five minutes of isometric legs, 100 total alternating dynamic legs. I try to pull as much as we can pull because pushing combos are pretty tough. Twenty total alternating stationary forward lunges. No more leg today. We're going to go through our upper body loop differently, same numbers. And then at the end, we're going to keep with our exertion theme we've been doing the last two weeks. And we're going to combo exertion in our obliques. We've been comboing exertion with a little bit of everything. We've comboed with your isometric abs. We've comboed with your uh, uh, upper body loop. We did a lot. <laughs> a lot. So after your 20 total alternating stationary forward lunges, we're gonna do chest pushing. You can either do push ups or chest presses. You're then gonna be on the ground or ball or bench for your pullovers. And then we're gonna do our shoulder raises. And then we're gonna do our hammer curls. And then we're gonna do our dips or kickbacks. So here we go. 20 chest pushing, whether you do push ups or chest presses. Take your time. By nature, pushing chest is shorter than your pulling chest. It's a similar motion lengthwise, but you push, which is always a little bit shorter in duration. But when you do your lat pullovers, that is a longer motion than your rows. Your upright rows are similar to your shoulder presses. Hammer curls tend to be a little easier than wide biceps. I know we repeat these things a lot because we kind of have to with how we train at home. But the last time I did this, did this exact routine, the up body one way, the up body a different way, was back in May. So it actually has been a while since we did this routine on the up body. After your 20 chest presses, pushing, you're on 20 lat pullovers, pulling. Whether you lay on the ground, whether you lay on the ball, whether you lay on a bench, Laying on the ball is a great supported training tool for the length of the exercise. Laying on a ball incorporates that stability potentially, but you might get a little more motion, which is good, but also can be bad. So be mindful of that. Laying on a bench, unless you're incorporating other tools like legs up, those types of things, you're going to be stable and you have a nice long, big, low motion. But be mindful if you're laying on something elevated, you're going to get more motion. Clearly great things can happen, but it's also where people get in trouble. 20 chest pushing reps, 20 lat pullovers, pulling reps. Then you're going to do up right rows preferred because the last time we did shoulders, we did our three different uh, shoulder raises. So 
either upright rows or raises if you want them. Feel free to mix up your raises if you really want to do them. 20 shoulders pulling. We're then going to do 20 hammer curls on the biceps. Technically an easier position versus your wide biceps. However, you have pulled going into it, so it might make your hammer curls feel harder. Blah, 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 blah. 20 upright rows, preferred, especially if you have load. So again, a little bit of everything today. I know the legs probably burn more than the abs core, but nothing's gonna really stick out today leaving us plenty of things to do on Friday. After your upright rows, not saying you should be done yet, hammer curls. Hammer curls is a narrow, sorry, neutral position, not a narrow position. Standing tall, hammer curls, 20 hammer curls. You pulled on your lap pullovers, but that doesn't bug your biceps very much. You pulled on your upright rows. That would bug your biceps a little bit. So don't be surprised if this feels harder than earlier, even though hammer curls is technically an easier position than wide biceps. But earlier you pushed before you did these. Twenty hammer curls and then you have 20 dips or kickbacks on your triceps, and that is shortening a shortened muscle. Dips and kickbacks, you shorten the muscle in the position, and then you shorten the muscle in the exercise. 20 hammer curls, and then 20 dips or kickbacks. Right, I'm going to start talking about the last circuit. I know you guys can all handle it. I know all your pace is very good. Your rhythm is right oblique goes to exertion, left oblique goes to exertion, different right oblique goes to exertion, blah, blah, blah. Like what we've been doing lately, but your exertion is always going to be 30. Jump, squat, split, jump, burpees, high knees, buckets. Please, you know that sounds familiar, right? However, Right oblique 25, double lateral leg lift set one, then do 30 on your exertion, and then you're gonna do your uh, left side 25. You have three sets of right side, three sets of left side, so three total different obliques, going with five sets of 30 exertion, unless you wanna do a sixth set that is, that's up to you. So, get it done ladies. I, I'm afraid to say go at your own pace. I'm going to be here with you, right? 25 right obliques, 30 on your exertion, 25 left obliques, 30 on your exertion, 6 sets of obliques, 3 each side, 5 sets of exertion. So kind of a big circuit. It's 150 total obliques and 150 total on the exertion. and not your first time. How about that? So I didn't say go fast. I want you to get it done at your pace, your skills, your abilities, your choices on your exertion. High knees, butt kicks, running revolutions, or walking reps, jump squats, split jumps, uh, jumping jacks, burpees, split jumps. 30 is the number. When you get done, you're gonna go to your other side oblique. I'm gonna be on the ground the first right and left, then I'm gonna do standing on the second right and left, and then I'm gonna to go to the ground again for the third right and left. Remember, I'm not doing all the reps, so don't count my reps, count your reps. Thirty exertion, 
But kicks and high knees don't take very long. Jumping jacks aren't too bad either. Left side up, double lateral leg lifts. You got the other side oblique. And then you're gonna do 30 exertion again. And then we'll do our standing obliques. Another rhythm changed. I wanted to wake you up a little bit. Three different rights eventually. Three different lefts eventually. Five sets of exertion eventually. 150 of each when you're all said and done. A little bit of focus, a little bit of work, a lot of fun. Wednesday afternoon. After your obliques, you're on your 30 exertion. High knees, butt kicks, jumping jacks, jump squats, split jumps. Don't be surprised if your legs feel a little heavy. You do the five one minute wall sits and the 100 reps of legs not too long ago. You only did 100 up body reps before you got back to using them. When you're done with your exertion, left hand standing right obliques, 25. Not saying you should be there by any means, but when you get there, standing left obliques, 25. You're then gonna be on your third set of exertion and then you'll get the other side. So the middle part of the circuit, cir circuit, circuit goes a little faster. Left hand, tick, tuck, tick, tuck. Standing, loaded, obliques. And after you get done with the right oblique, you're going to do your 30 exertion. Then you'll do your left oblique the same way. And then your 30 exertion. And then you're kind of almost done, right? We're getting there. But if you ever have to leave, just make sure you get both sides obliques done. When you get to your exertion, taps is a great one. Higher, bigger, potentially slower is reps. Lower and quicker is revolutions. That's an option and a great option and a very good agility option, right? Butt kicks, high knees, jumping jacks. Those are all considered agility exercises. Jump squats, split jumps, burpees, lateral bench hops. Those are plyometric exercises. A little more load and a little more impact and a little more power on plyometric and then potentially a little quicker and a little smoother on the agility. Potentially. After your third set of your exertion, the weight is going to be in your right hand for your left obliques. Tick, tuck, tick, tuck. Right hand, left obliques. Then you're going to be on your fourth exertion. You're going to be almost done. Tick, tuck, tick. Breathe and focus. Again, a little bit of stimulation when I change things up a little bit. But you did have a lot of change today. You had your five one minute planks to go with your abs. You had the chest, back, shoulder, biceps, tries. You had the five sets of wall sits with your five different legs. And then your different chest, back, shoulder, biceps, tries. Here you are on some different obliques and your exertions. After the right hand, left oblique, 25 is done. You're going to be on your exertion for the fourth time. Then you're going to go to the ground. If you want to do both sides while you're on the ground, that way you don't have to get on and off the ground again. You can, but you do have one more exertion to go. So fourth exertion. And then you're going to be on the ground for your hip dips. If you want to do 25 right and 25 left and then do your last exertion, feel free. You're all done. If you want to do the right and then exertion and the left, cool. You just got to get on and off the ground again. 
The downside is pushing you up. Kind of mean at the end of the workout. However, I talked about it earlier. Yes, it's good for your obliques and your core. You get some sneaky lats in there. It also means you don't have to lay all the way on the ground per se. 25 right obliques. If you want to do your exertion between the sides, cool. If you want to get both sides done since you're down there, cool. But you do have one more exertion to go. Twenty-five right, and then either do exertion and then your left, or do your left and then your exertion, and then you're all done. Happy Wednesday. It was six consecutive workouts. And I use exertion as a very general term for working hard. You've got agility versions, you've got plyometric versions. If you're at the gym, you've got cardio tools. So there's many, many different versions of the agility, exertion, plyometric, work hard scenario. If you have stairs, I know it sounds weird, 10 exertion takes probably 15, 20 seconds, so you run up and down once or twice, right? Uh, the higher reps, higher exertions, going up and down a couple times. Running a quick lap around the house, right? I know it's corny, but just a quick little stimuli to work hard. When you're done, pat yourself on the back. Don't go running to your computer. Today was a little bit of everything, so I call that a general strength and fitness day. Happy? Wednesday.